two players from Indonesia, Japan and China in that quarter-final lineup. Uh, semi-finals, uh, well, the all-Chinese affair at the bottom half of the draw will be our match following the semi-final from the top half of the draw where we have the Olympic champion against the Asian Games gold medalist. Well, as far as Victor Axelsson is concerned, he has been in the final of 12 of the 16 Super 1000 tournaments that he's participated in since the inception of the HSBC BWF World Tour back in 2018. That is staggering statistics. Victor Axelsson, the Olympic champion, trying to reach his sixth final in only his ninth tournament of the year. Also looking to reach his 11th Super 1000 final in the last 12 Super 1000 tournaments. Standing in his way, is the hugely talented Jonathan Christie. Won Asian Games gold in Jakarta in 2018, beating Chou Tian Chen of Chinese Taipei in the final, having beaten the number one seed, Chi Yu Chi, in the very first round. Chi Yu Chi will see in the next of our semi-finals. So this, I can tell you, will be an 11th meeting between these two uh, players, and of the previous 10, Victor Axelsson has won eight of them, including the last five. The last time they met was the final of the Japan Open earlier this year. 750 event. Two straight games, 21-7, 21-18. So Victor Axelsson has won the toss of the coin and has chosen ends. And like Yamaguchi, he has chosen to start the more difficult end the near side of the court, hitting with the drift. Well, Jonathan Christie has never reached a final of a Super 1000 tournament. Here is his big chance to try and do so. He's 25 years of age, so he will turn 26 next Friday, so that's six days' time. 179, he's 5 foot 10, and he has been as high as number two in the world ranking. That was from the end of January, early this year, 10 consecutive weeks. He beat the winner of the Australian Open, the left-hand winner, Hong Yang, in three games in the first round. He then went to three games against Canada's Brian Yang. In the quarter-final, he beat his teammate, the man promoted from the reserve list, Rustavito. And how lovely to see Rustavito back on court and playing so well after numerous injury problems. Victor Axelsson is 29 years of age now, and he's enjoying his 144th week in total as world number one. Born in Odense, uh, which is where we will have the Denmark Open, next month and in his matches so far well he beat Chico Dui Wodoyo of Indonesia in the first round had to come from a game down against Wang Su Wei of Chinese Taipei and then in the quarterfinal it was the battle of the former world champions Lo Ken Yu who won the world title in 2021 against Victor Axelsson who was world champion until a couple of weeks ago uh, when he lost his crown in the quarter-final stage of the World Championships in Copenhagen.
So Fine Datan of India is our umpire for this one. And the Wan Kui of China is the service judge. Nervous at the moment, the Indonesian coach. Ladies and gentlemen, he? He wants the on my right, Victor Axelson, Dan Bob. And on my left, Jonathan Kusli, Indonesia. Jonathan Kusli, Kuslov, Lavor, Ray. So the first of the men's singles semi finals gets underway. The Asian Games gold medalist, Jonathan Christie. One of love. Indonesia, the far side of the court against the Olympic champion, Victor Axelson. <laughs> that goes long with the back line. We're seeing immediately the problems Lock. that we saw for the player at the near side of the court in the our previous semi-final, the women's singles. And that turned into a brilliant match. Well, what's interesting about this semi-final is that prior to this year, neither of these two players on court had ever been passed a second round at this venue in Changzhou. Oh. Three, low. Judge. Are jangling in these early stages. We've hardly had a rally so far. Judge. Uh, I think the drift is perhaps more pronounced today. Bigger crowd in and Perhaps if the air conditioning is automated, the more crowds, the more the air conditioning have to work because literally a number of people warm up the, the arena. Oh, that's good play. And the more the air conditioning on, the more the drift is, the wind is going to be blowing about. Thank you. 
It's got beautiful movement around the court, strong, powerful movement. Jonathan Christie. Ian Anthony Ginting, a former winner here back in 2018. A beautiful poise as they lunge forward to the net. Yeah. Left it too late to make a decision to play it. There's Axelson's coach, his father in law. That's a good smash. Jonathan Christie, as all players who play against Victor Axelson, has got to be wary of lifting to him. And because he's so tall and he's got such an effective attacking game, he finds angles that other players simply can't find because they don't have his physical height. demonstrated in that rally. I like the idea, though, from Jonathan Christie. Instead of blocking off the first smash, he tries to lift again. There. It wasn't good enough, but at least it's made Victor Axelson think about the fact that normally he smashes and immediately follows up to the net. One of his opponents is going to lift, as Jonathan Christie tried to do there, then he's got to be wary about rushing into the net. The question is whether Jonathan Christie can execute those defensive lifts well enough or not. That's a beautiful smash. Lovely. Exceptionally good follow-up from Jonathan Christie. When singles players know that they've played a good smash, they know that the only possible return is a block to the net. And that's why they race forward, and that's what we call follow-up. It's gone wide. Yeah, he was too committed on his defensive play. That's well spotted by Jonathan Christie. So nine all. Oh, 
Lovely, lovely shot from Jonathan Christie. Cross-court block on the defence from Victor Axelson, who was greeted by a cross-court drive from Christie. No, he's not happy with himself there. One of three straight points for Christie. Missed it. And it is Jonathan Christie who has the one point advantage at the mid game interval here in the opening game of the first men's singles semi final. Well, a very even contest so far. from eight tournaments so far this year for Victor Axelson for Jonathan Christie two finals from ten tournaments won the Indonesian Masters beating Chico Dwi Wodoyo in the final that's long and then of course lost in the final of the Japan Open against his opponent of today. Now, I don't think Victor Axelson will win that challenge. Maybe he just wants to have a look and see on the Hawkeye graphics how far he's missing it by. Well, that's quite some distance. Challenge unsuccessful. One challenge remaining. Service over. Grand level. Play. Yeah, just out of reach of Jonathan Christie. That's a good lift. Oh, that's a pity from an Indonesian perspective. I like the thought process. Trying to play the drop. The axles and forehand net. Yeah. Well, 
really getting the angles on some of his smashes and downward shots that we normally see from Axelsson. A number of the players have been telling me how difficult it is to time the shuttle in here. That's a much better smash. He wanted the shuttle changed. Axelson said no, it was fine. Tensions. How did he miss that? That was a loose net shot because the timing was off because the first net shot from Jonathan Christie got the net cord and he was badly deflected. And that miss may come to haunt Christie. So he's missed a sitter at the front of the court in the previous rally into the net. That one pushed too long. Well left. You see, when you're at full stretch, it's much more difficult to control your shot because your body isn't in that balanced, poised position. A string. Has the string already gone? Can't tell. No, it hasn't. Broke it with this attempted steep smash.
So just one point in it. That's just ridiculously good. What do you do against that? Take a look at this. He gets the net cord. Look at that. What can you possibly do? Very well left. My goodness. Two point advantage and two points away from this opening game. Victor Axelson. Yeah, it was clearly long too. Seem to snatch at that backhand a little, Christy. He was under severe pressure, though. So three game point opportunities for Victor Axelson. First time of asking and the Olympic champion takes the opening game, 21-17 against the Asian Games gold medalist, Jonathan Christie. 21 minutes for the opening game. And a huge upward task for Jonathan Christie, who's now going to have to play from the more difficult end. So one game to the good, Victor Axelson, the world number one. Now, what can Jonathan Christie do here? Yeah, I think he's going to have to play an attacking game. Already signs of that in this opening rally. Oh. 
An awful lot of hard work and running in that rally from Christie with no reward. Longest rally so far, I thought it was. Strings broken. Uh, that push from Jonathan Christie into the forehand corner of Axelson. Look at that, not deep enough or high enough. He's able to intercept it. some forehand net then going for the backhand net he's trying to make the tall man twist and turn but it's very rare so far I know we've only had four points of this second game but Jonathan Christie really being able to get the shuttle behind the tall day Indecision. Uh, you can't afford to take it out late at the back of the court. Can't afford that against anyone, let alone against Axelson. And this is danger time for Jonathan Christie. Got to keep the scoreline reasonably close. That's long. See, Axelson had that problem in the opening game. It's desperately difficult to push to the back of the court from this near side. Another error. Well, it looks to me as if Christie's struggling to know what to try next. Belief is seeping away too. Yeah. 
That was halfway down the net. Seven straight points. Beautiful handle. Yeah, strings have gone. Which is why he tried to get the neck cord. Good rally. Yeah. Well, Jonathan Christie continued with his plan to try and make Axelson move from side to side. And he did it very well in that rally. There's a lot of talk from Axelson's coach. I wonder if that's an indication that he's a little concerned about this match. He was ready to pounce, but the net shot from Christie was simply too good. Look, he's way off balance there. Great recovery. Yeah, it's still spinning and tumbling as Axelson was trying to play that kill. That's why he made the error. Seems to take his eye off the shuttle there. Christy. So, so difficult when there's these steep smashes. Christie once again trying to defend the smash with a lift. And it was simply too short. The first lift was too short. Then look where Axelson's hitting that second smash from barely half court. To the mid-game interval. The Olympic champion with a six-point advantage. 
And Christie's got to change his game plan. Time to change and do something new. Great shot. Oh, my goodness. Well, he's challenging Challenge that is Christie. How on earth Axelson got back the early shots of that rally. This is quite beyond me. Yep, plumb on the line. That's a nice shot from Christie. Yeah. Once again, down the forehand, down the backhand, down the forehand. There was going down the backhand again. There's the forehand. Now well, the backhand. That's great disguise on that from Axelson. The whole body movement and action of the racket looked as if he was going to lift the shuttle. And he just blocked it back to the net. Court. Working exceptionally well. Well, he's challenging. I know, it was mighty close. Yeah, 
good challenge. Very good challenge. Correction, out. Service over. 57. Late. a bit of slice on that get it down so steeply Frustration after the rally from Christie. It's a gift. That went over. Oh, you've got to ride your luck. Desperately, desperately trying to pressurise and kill from the front of the court, Jonathan Christie. But the net shot from Axelson was simply too good. Steepness and pace. And Axelson yeah. now just two points away from the final. Oh, 
Service over. 11, 19. And it's gone wide as well. Nineteen. Oh. Well, Jonathan Christie had a lucky net cord just a moment ago. This time the luck is with Victor Axelson. That thundered into the top of the tape and just bounced over. Match point opportunities for Victor Axelson. Oh, that was going wide. Axelson could have left that at his backhand net and it would have been match over. Match point number two. Yeah. Well taken. My goodness, that's good. Third opportunity for the Dane. This time he converts. No real celebration. He has another match to come, and that's in the final tomorrow. 21 17, 21 14 in a match lasting 47 minutes. And Victor Axelson, incredibly, has made it through to an 11th Super 1000 tournament final in the last 12 Super 1000 tournaments. That really is crazy stats. Match won by Victor Axelson, 21-17, 21-14. So safely through to the final, Axelson. He was in the final of the Fuzhou China Open. Or the China Open in Fuzhou six years ago. But he's in the final here in Changzhou for the first time. So confirmation of that scoreline, 21-17, 21-14 in a match lasting 47 minutes.
welcome back to Changzhou and the second session on semi-finals day here at the Victor China Open. After that a victory from Victor Axelsen, we look forward to the second of the men's singles semi-finals in the Xiu Qi, the former world number two and world championship silver medalist from 2018 up against his teammate Mu Guangzhou. Well, as far as the men's single draw is concerned, well, in the bottom half of the draw, two players from China, two from Japan. We lost the two seeds from the bottom quarter. We lost the former champion, Anthony Ginting, in the first round, then the All England champion, Li Xi Feng, the number six seed, also from China, in the second round, which meant that the bottom of section of this quarterfinal draw was all unseeded. It was Lu Guangzhou that came through against Kanta Sunyama, who had beaten Anthony Ginty, the former champion, in the first round in three tough games. So we know that a Chinese player will be in the final, but which of these two Chinese players will face off against the world number one and reigning Olympic champion, Victor Axelsen? As Chi Yu Chi is concerned, well, he's been in three All England finals, including a 